G'day guys, it's your favorite Dingo Angler Jace here, back with the fifth and final part of my 9.1.5 Arms Warrior PvP series. Today we're going to look at macros, UI and keybinds. So before you spray me about the add-ons, the video is coming. It was originally part of this guide, but I've decided to break it down into two separate videos. Decided to do that because I think that video might be useful for people that aren't playing the Warrior class as well. So let's kick this bad boy off with macros. Alrighty, if you're new to PvP and possibly new to the class, you might be asking, what the fuck are macros and why do we use them? Well, we use them because they streamline our gameplay and improve our efficiency by fulfilling multiple functions at once, managing our ability use on multiple targets, reducing keystrokes, and saving keybinds. I'll walk you through the essential warrior macros and explain why we need to use them, and then we'll walk, have a talk about more advanced macros and how to implement those into your gameplay. I'll put the list of the macros in the description below so that you can just copy and paste those bad boys and get out there and just start fucking pumping. Alrighty. Your first macro you're going to look at is a Mortal Strike macro. And this isn't to use the ability. Um, it's going to fulfill multiple functions, like I said. So you're going to have a start attack in there, which means essentially it's going to engage a right click. So just to start hitting, it'll do that for you. It's going to cast Mortal Strike and it'll taunt all five arena pets. It's really useful. I've also got in there slash tar regenerating wild seed. So in the seed procs, I don't need to go around and try and click on the nameplate. I can just press that macro and it'll target that seed. So that's the first one we need. Next one is, we're going to want an execute macro. We'll find that in here so I can show you what I'm talking about. There he is. Again, we want start attack in there. We're going to put that in a lot of these macros. Uh, cancel or a blade storm and slash cast execute. The reason you need that is someone might be low. Blade storm's not doing enough damage. You just want to hit the macro and execute. Don't have uh, this guy in low range, so I can't show you the execute. But yeah, it's going to cancel the blade storm and it's going to cast the execute. All right, the next one on our list is the Swifty One-Shot Macro. Every warrior needs one of these. It is a honed tradition. We must have one. What that's going to do is pop all of my offensive cooldowns. So I want to burst. I Colossal Smash. Then with one button, bang, everything's popped. So you'll see there my Blood Fury, my Gladiator's Badge, and my Avatar all pop at once. They're all off the GCD, so you can be doing other things. You can press that macro, so as you're charging, Colossus Smash as you get to the target, Swifty macro goes off and you just start pumping into someone. Every warrior needs one. Uh, next macro, what do we got? I've got a list here to the left. It's hard to keep track because they're all fucking everywhere. A spear macro. Um, you might be someone that likes to use spear like this. I don't, I think it's too slow. So I've got a, slash et cursor spear of bastion macro so what that does all i need to do is pop this where i want it and whack there goes my spear i don't need to place it i can just with one click of a button send my spear out and get going um i think this is a necessity but i do think that you need to play without it first so you can learn the radius of the spear you'll miss it a few times otherwise and you'll get the shits this can be difficult to land on people because you don't know where or I guess that what the radius is, but learn the radius and then you'll know where to throw it to kind of catch people out. All right, a charge macro. So this is really a multi-purpose charge macro and they are fantastic. So what this macro is gonna do, have a look in here, it's gonna cancel or a blade storm for one. So let's say, close that so it doesn't delete the macro. We're blade storming and I wanna charge this guy. I just press the macro, it cancels the blade storm for me and charge it again, it, it, it improves efficiency. You don't have to think about all these things, you just need to press one button, it's gonna do all the functions you wanna fulfill at once. Um, equip set, don't worry about that anymore, that's an old mop thing. Um, then we've got, just as a normal uh, part of the macro is the charge for one, but also I can hamstring with the macro as well. So I can just press the same button, for me is mouse wheel up, bit of a weird one, but yeah, you can hamstring off the charge with no input of finding your hamstring bind as well. Um, then we've got a focus kick and a focus fear. So that'll depend on the uh, modifier used, but let's say that this guy over here is the healer. I'm hitting this guy. Healer starts casting. I go over there, kick. Same sort of thing. I can be hitting this guy, use the other macro with the fear and fear. So a really good macro to have um, it can be hard when you're first starting to think about all these functions, think, crap, that guy over there is casting a heal. I need to get over there and interrupt that. Well, this macro is going to help you out because you'll remember, okay, if I use it, it's going to charge. I'm on the target, it's going to hamstring. But if I use it with the alt or shift modifier over there, it's going to either kick or fear that guy. So it can be a really useful macro to uh, implement into your gameplay, and I highly recommend it. The next one is a leap macro. 
find that one for you. Here we are. So this one here, again, cancels the blade storm for us. We're going to have that in pretty much every macro because a lot of the time you'd need to stop and try and find a way to cancel your blade storm. Don't worry about that. Put this in every macro. It's just going to help you out. And then the cheeky thing about this is it's got slash cast uh, at arena one, two, three pummel. So whoever you leap at and kick, it's going to interrupt. Um, the thing I will say about this though is if you are facing your current target, it's just going to kick them. So be very careful about moving your target away to leap and kick. Uh, I'll give you a look at that. So let's say we're let's say we're blade storming someone over here, and this is a healer, and we want to interrupt him. All we do that bang, and we kick him. Obviously, he's not an arena target, so that won't go off. But yeah, that'll kick any target that you leap to. It's really really handy. Um, I've got another one here for you too. Very similar thing. It's just going to be heroic. That's not the one. Where is it? There it is. Um, it's just going to leap and it's going to fear the focus. So make sure you have the person on focus, but it'll do the same thing. With one press, you're just going to leap over and fear. All right. Next, we want to look at our pummel macro. So this one's a very common one as well. Very important. Uh, let's say this guy's our focus here. And this is our current target. That's a healer. Pop it off. Oh, he's casting a big heal. I'm just going to walk over and focus kick. And I can just keep doing what I'm doing. I don't need to like swap target and kick or anything or make it difficult. All I need to do is press it. I don't even need to target him. So it's a very important macro, very commonly used macro. Um, macros like this, if you can integrate them into your play, are going to help you a lot with your success in the arena. All right, these next couple, pretty much the same thing as the pummel macro, though just a different ability. So this is my target here. My focus is over here. This cheeky little lion fucker. Look at this guy. Get him, bro. Okay, so we're hammering away, hammering away. I just want to Stormbolt the healer. There it goes. Stormbolt goes over there. Didn't even need to target him. That's the beauty of these macros. You can fulfill these functions. You can keep attacking this guy, and without any allocation of mental resources, I can Stormbolt that guy over there. Similar kind of thing with a fear. I'm just whacking away, whacking away, whacking away. Oh, I want a fear. I run over. Fear. Whoa, look at that. Didn't even need to target him. That's the beauty of these macros. So we'll have a look at those. First one was our Stormbolt one. There it is there. So it's gonna cancel Aura Blade Storm again. If I don't hold the modified down, cast Stormbolt at this bloke. If I do, over here at my focus without even need to targeting him. Same thing with the fear one. Could be hitting this guy over here. I wanna fear this guy without even targeting him. I can just hold down that modifier and fear that guy. If I don't hold down the modifier, it's gonna fear my current target. Very handy stuff to have and learn to use. I uh, got a similar one again with this arm. It won't work on any of these mobs, so I won't demonstrate how to use it, but you get the concept by now, I'm sure. It's gonna cancel Aura Blade Storm again. Remember, very important function every time. Then without modifier being held down, is gonna disarm my current target. Or alternatively, if I hold down that shift modifier, it's gonna disarm this guy over here. All right. I do have another disarm macro for you too. Let's say you're versing a team like my main team, WPS. There's only one person on that team you're going to disarm, and it's going to be the warrior every time he uses Warbreaker. We've been over that time and time again. So you can use instead, in that circumstance, a disarm macro that goes straight at Arena X. So let's say the warrior is Arena 2. You just drag this macro, replace your focus uh, disarm macro, and stick it on there. You won't even need to target him. You won't even need to think about who your focus is. You can just press disarm every time he wall breakers. It's as simple as that. Really handy to have. It can be used again. Let's say you're versing healer, boomkin, DK. Every time he pillars, you can do the same thing to him. Just change that uh, arena number to match the one on the arena unit frames, and you're good. Defensive ones. All right. All right, a little fill in here. Couldn't fucking find anyone to intervene in that Kyrian shithole, so I had to hit up one of the boys. So Sen's going to give us a hand here with this intervene macro. So intervene. Have a look here. It's going to cancel or a blade storm, and it's going to intervene him. So I'm blade storming. I press that, cancels it, and it's going to intervene to him. You want to have one of these for your healer, and you're going to have a second one for your other party member. You'll also want to have one that does it as a mouse over function. So I'll find mine and I'll give you a quick look at that. Um, it's going to cancel or a blade storm again, and it's going to intervene the target just by mouse overing. So I can be over here and I just use it on him like that, and it's going to intervene straight to him. Very handy to have for things like world PvP and battlegrounds as well. Oh, alrighty, let's have a look at some other useful macros. Let's say I'm hitting this guy over here, and this is uh, an arena pet. It's an Earth Deli and my healer wants to drink. He's saying, guys, I can't drink. Fuck this Earth Deli, get him off me. And I just go over here, mouse over, and I taunt him. Beautiful. He's going to come over, start attacking me. My guy can start trying to drink. 
So how do we do that? Well, let's find the macro, taunt. All you need to do, slash cast, add mouse over, taunt. I don't need to click on the name plan. All I do, bring my cursor over to who I want to taunt and I just press it. It's just gonna taunt without targeting the person. I know they're targeted right now, but you don't need to do that. You saw that the first time around. Another good macro too, let's say I'm in a battleground, not an arena, and I wanna focus target this guy here. Oh, uh, cool, focus targeted. Don't need to find any other cheeky way to do it. Um, nice and quick. Give you a look at that one. Where are we? This one's gonna be a prick to find. There it is. Slash focus at mouse over, that simple. All right, another little goodie, a shattering throw macro. So again, this one's mostly for the purpose of canceling the, the blade storm. So I'm here, this guy's getting low. Oh, I'm blade storming, my other guy's pumping him and he bubbles, oh shit, shattering throw. Cancels the blade storm for me. I wanna get those shatters off as quickly as I can. You wanna get the bubble off, get the other immunity off the ice block, fuck it off and start pumping them again and finish that game then and there. Need that cancel or a blade storm shatter macro. The reality with all these uh, cancel or a blade storm macros is you'd need to use some other method to cancel it. It'd be two buttons. Instead, you can just make it one, and that's why the macros are fantastic. Um, another one I like to go, I'm gonna have to get out of combat for this. These guys get real beef when you start hitting them. All right, just mounts me up. But what else does it do? What else does it do? Where is it? Mount, there it is. So it's gonna use my mount, but it's also going to cancel or sweeping strikes. Why would you want to stop sweeping strikes? You're pounding two people. Yeah, but, yeah, but, watch. I'm going ham, I've got sweeping strikes up. My healer hexes this guy here. If I keep doing that, it's going to break it. So, hit my mount, takes away that buff. Gets rid of my sweeping strikes. I can just keep pumping away without breaking the hex or I'm playing with a mage, the poly. Another important macro to have, there are gonna be times when you don't want sweeping strikes up. You've used it, you need to get it off quickly have that button there. Again, you can make it a two-purpose macro. You're not ever gonna need to do both of those things at once, so you can fulfill two purposes with that. It's fantastic. All right, on to perhaps my favorite macros. Arena one, two, and three macros. Why are these important? Well, let's have a look at them. So with one press, with one press, I can target this guy, or I can pummel this guy. Holding down an alt modifier, I can then instead focus them. So I don't need to go out of my way to focus target people. I can swap it almost seamlessly. Just hold down an alt modifier, press the button, it's gonna focus them instead of targeting them. Okay, what about if I wanna use abilities on them? Let's make it easier again. I hold down that shift modifier and it's going to just throw the storm bolt at them again. I don't need to target people to do these things. I can just use these macros to fulfill that function for me and make my life significantly easier. And finally, I hold in that control mod, it's gonna charge and pummel. The reason I like this is you've got one focus target and you've got three targets on your arena frames. Let's say you've got the healer focus targeted and the mage starts casting poly and you're quick enough, you can just hold down that control mod and then charge straight at that mage and kick that poly. It's very handy to have. Um, where do I have these bound? We'll go over this a little bit more later, but I've got them bound. I've got a Razor Naga. Oh fuck, I've charged someone. Razor Naga, I've got them here. Ten. 11 and 12. I just find it very easy to hit those and they're very fantastic for just getting down there and swapping targets, swapping my focus, using that storm up or that uh, charge kick. All right, moving on to UI. So in my personal experience, a melee player's focus is generally more central with awareness being dedicated to nameplates and less so on peripheral aspects of gameplay. It's a little bit easier when you're standing back and you're casting spells of people to see what's going on around the field. But when you're here, it can be a little bit more difficult, and that's for a number of reasons. So let's go over those now. Essentially, you're attempting to position your character relative to the moving enemy. So this guy's moving, I'm consistently trying to stay on top of him. Your target's movements are gonna demand that you adjust your positioning to do your damage. So as they move, you need to move. This is gonna differ to casters, obviously, because you're attempting to close the gap where they're attempting to open the gap. Um, therefore, for casters, proximity is less vital. So this results in casters being able to momentarily move their awareness away from the target when they're casting spells to access information that might be around the periphery. Um, I'm not saying caster is easier by any means, it's just that this particular guide focuses on improving your warrior gameplay and thus the issues that melee characters encounter. So what does all this mean for your UI? Well, disclaimer, 
I'm not saying that this is the most optimal way to set up your UI. Um, these are just some tips based on my personal experience as a Melee player, and they may help you better optimize your UI. All right, back to that big question, what the fuck does all of this mean for my UI? Well, it means that we need to optimize our UI to be able to play that game of cat and mouse with a moving target, whilst also being able to access that important information quickly. Um, for starters, you're gonna wanna have all of your information kind of centered around the middle of your screen. Don't have it so it's blocking your field of view, have it in a way that you can still see the field of battle, but it's important to have it towards the center. Um, I like to approach this by categorizing information as party related or enemy related. My thinking's quite compartmentalized like that. Um, I have my party frames here. So I have them as those raid style party frames. They're large and they're class colored. And you'll see over here, I've got my arena frames. So S arena, arena one, two, and three. I've got my party frame here and my target frame here. The exception to my party slash enemy related rule is my focus frame. So I've got it over here because let's say my, uh, my awareness is momentarily diverted towards my party frames. I can still see what my focus target's doing. If I'm looking over here, I can see it on the, uh, the arena unit frame. So that, that way, I guess if I'm looking over here or over here, I can still utilize my disruptive tools to interrupt and annoy the, the focus target. I can see what they're doing at all times. Um, I like to keep my awareness, I guess, at my player level or above as well. So I can see what's kind of happening around me, happening throughout the entire arena. So I've positioned my UI in like an arc and I keep my plates here so that my eyes are consistently kept up above. Um, I only need to look then parallel along the X axis and you don't even need to move your head to do that. So I can look either just shift my eyes to the left or right to see what I need to see. I've got my enemy cooldown related information. So if they pop an offensive cooldown, for example, it's gonna come up here on an, a weak aura that I've got, or alternatively, I've got Omnibar down here, and I've got that separated into arena one, two, and three as well, just to make it easy for me to look down quickly and see the target and see what they've got off cooldown. Well, sorry, coming back off cooldown. Um, that there, obviously on the Y axis as opposed to the X, and I just need to look up and down again, averting my gaze. Either way, with respect to that X and Y axis. I don't need to avert my gaze too far away. Um, if you do have information kind of out here in the corners of your screen, up too high, down too low, it's gonna take you too long to perform a visual search. So, so to look across your, your monitor, I guess, depending on the size of the monitor, this is a 27 incher. Um, if you have to do this, you're gonna miss critical information. Now, the problem with that is it's gonna to lead to mistakes and insufficient responses to enemy ability usage. And this meta is very fast paced it's all about responding to enemy cooldown use as quickly as you possibly can. Now, the main thing with UI is to make it comfortable for you. These are some general tips that work for me. Keep in mind, they may not work for you. Optimize your UI in a way that you feel comfortable as a foundational point playing the game of cat and mouse, but also being able to look and see that critical information as quickly as you possibly can. All right, moving on to the final part of this video, keybinds. So keybinds in large come down to personal preference. So therefore I'm not gonna give you specific keybinds or tell you that there's the most optimal way to do this. I'm just gonna give you some personal tips so that you can attempt to optimize your key bindings if you feel you need to do so. Um, mine are quite unorthodox. My keybinds for my rotation are on the side of this Naga alongside those Arena 1, 2, 3 macros. The rest of my abilities are on the left-hand side with my keyboard so that I can attack and be using all of my abilities at the same time. I also think that this helps with my ability to move my character around in a superior way. I might just be fucking imagining things, but yeah. Um, if you're trying to optimize your key binds, I suggest you write down all of the available binds on a bit of paper. I do this when I start a new class and then go about assigning them from there. So write them down in clustered groups, for example, one to seven, Q to T, A to G, and Z to V, and then put those modifiers in there as well. Shift, Alt, Control, fuck, Control, I hate it. Um, but yeah, put your preferred ones in there. I like to assign my abilities and keep them in little groups. For example, my E is Pummel, R is Stormbolt, and T is Fear. So I've got all those tools together. When, I, when I'm thinking about using those tools, I know where they all are instantly. Um, if you keep your abilities clustered, it's going to help considerably with your muscle muscle memory. So when you're playing the game, you won't have to think a whole lot. You'll think kind of in little clustered groups. Um, I think that you need to assign these keys based on the frequency and criticality of each ability. So you want to put your rotation on an easy to access area like keys one to six, for example, maybe with some modifiers there. Um, and you don't want to have abilities like this Kyrian file on ER or T, 
because they're, they're easy to reach keys. You want to make the most of them. I have that on some random key somewhere. You could even have that unbound if you really wanted to. But yeah, think about tools like Pummel and Reflect. It's really important that you have them somewhere that you can access them quickly. Let's say you're doing damage and you want to kick. I can just kick and I can keep doing damage at the same time seamlessly. I'm doing damage, something it gets cast on me, bang, reflect. I can reflect instantly. It's really important that you've got them somewhere you can access quickly. As I said before, my pummel is on E, my reflect is on X. Both really easy to pick up spots. Um, my last tip to you is to make use of those arena one, two, three macros that I gave you earlier. Find them somewhere comfortable and get used to using them. They really can take your play to the next level. They're really important and really powerful macros. All right, guys, that is it for part five of our 9.1.5 Arms Warrior PvP Guide series. Thanks for all the love on YouTube and for all the follows on Twitch. It is all much appreciated. As usual, if you like this video, give her a crisp thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see my content as it goes live. Doing both of those things really does help me with the channel growth and I'd really appreciate it. Also, comment below with any content you'd like to see in the future. Obviously, the guide series is complete now, but I'll keep pumping out those 2v2 and 3v3 guide breakdowns and you'll get that add-on guide coming in the next few days as well. Have a happy new year and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.